Welcome, guys, to Metalidium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about Contrast, this new album, Math World, and more things related to, in general for the metal world or in general in the metal music. So we are starting by asking, how has the band been the, the band during the last well, almost nine years? Because your your last album, Explosive, was released in 2014. Now, nine years later, we have this Mad World. Yeah, uh, concerning studio albums, it was quite a long break for us. Although we still have been very busy during uh, this almost uh, decade, uh, we've been touring a lot. We've been on uh, the biggest stages all over Europe. So uh, it's not that we uh, did not do anything, let's say, but uh, break, let's say. Okay. Okay, well, nine years is nine years, almost 10 years for, for a new album. So for you, what are the biggest differences that exist compared to the previous album to this new one? Uh, I guess the main uh, difference is that uh, this album is the first contrast album that's completely self-produced. Uh, so we did not work with an external producer on this one. Uh, which uh, probably makes Madworld uh, the most honest uh, contrast album so far, because we really uh, put all our effort uh, into this one. And uh, actually, it was uh, quite a lot of fun and also interesting uh, experience uh, to to work it out uh, all by ourselves, you know, from the very first ideas, uh, which I drafted like two, two and a half years ago already. Uh, plus, of course, uh, studio recordings, the whole uh, sound programming, etc. Uh, we all did it by ourselves, and I think we can be very satisfied with the result. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, uh, with this new, with this new album, uh, with this new album, Math War, you are ten years. Uh, well, we are. You are more more than ten years with Neighbor Records because your your first album with them was uh, Second Hand Wonderland. Was your first album with them? So how was now the well, situation with Neville Records after a little more than three years of more than three years with them? So how was the, the things are going like the first time, or perhaps now it's more like a business, etc. Uh they're very supportive. Uh I think uh we from the beginning made a very good choice with uh signing up with Napalm. Uh and uh I think it's it's also seen uh, all the uh, through all the artist roster. Uh, with all the metal artists, they became one of the biggest and most important metal uh, uh, labels in the world. And uh, we, we've been, uh, as you said, uh, quite some time with them. We are very happy uh, to work with them. They are very supportive, very highly professional. So, yeah, it's it's uh, a logical choice for us to to uh, also pu publish Madworld with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I've been hearing this one well, this new album, Math Warning. For me, you have a lot of a lot of new music like techno, well, electronic, industrial, well, it's normal with the metal aspects. But the curious thing when I saw more information about the band is that a lot of magazines puts puts your influence like a folk metal. So I don't know why. So because this album is very far away from the folk, it for folk, folk era. So are you agree with this aspect to put it like a band of folk metal? Uh, I think this mainly becomes from the uh, is coming from the past, from our past, because uh, let's say the the first uh, real success that we had it was in two thousand nine, two thousand ten, uh, was with uh, Bomba uh, from the album Time to Tango, and uh, then later Hey DJ, and we uh, shot the music videos on those tracks in traditional Austrian uh, lederhosen, you know lederhosen and Tiendl, uh, so. Uh, the outfits were, um, yeah, let's say funny uh, in the beginning, but it kind of stuck. And uh, this uh, this style, uh, our outfits, they became kind of a trademark of contrast. So people by now recognize us uh, because of uh, those uh, outfits. And actually on the new album, Madworld, we also uh, wrote a song about this uh, topic, uh, uh, which is called Lederhosen Overkill. So that's track nine on uh, on the album, uh, track eight, sorry. Uh, and uh, I think people and media are still referring uh, to this to this uh, style elements, let's say, which is which is fine by us. I mean, it's uh, it's kind of our trademark in the end. 
Okay. Okay. Well, all these aspects that, uh, that I saw when you described a few as you mentioned a, a few seconds ago, is that the that you use the word tango. So tango is 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 well, it's a traditional traditional style from Argentina, especially from the Rio de la Rio de Plata. So why did you decide to use a tango in the name or for this the time to tango? Uh the very first album that we uh, recorded was called uh, Welcome Home. And then uh, with the next album, Time to Tango, uh, we decided we need to go more out there, you know? And as we are uh, mixing a lot of styles, a lot of elements, we are experimenting a lot with uh, many, many different uh, kinds of influences. Uh, it was just naturally that this kind of title Although we're not really uh, in including or implementing the tango itself, uh, this title just uh, stands out and kind of represents uh, all all those influences that we mix into our uh, into our music. At least back then, it really fit well. As you mentioned, the new influences, the more electronic kind of stuff, and the sound uh, sound elements that we're using by now, you're uh, absolutely correct this is kind of new with uh, madwell and we worked uh, much much more with uh, let's say synthesizers and electronic elements sound programmings and stuff so i did that uh, a lot during the writing process and uh, that's uh, that kind of makes it a little bit different of course also from the the previous contrast albums and we kind of reinvented ourselves with this mm. okay at uh, 2000, uh, 2006, you won the Austrian Newcomer Awards. That are usually mm -hmm. for the one, well, usually for the metal scene, the Grammy, the the MTV Music Players doesn't mean anything for us because it's just for the mainstream scene. So, but uh, e either way, Austrian Newcomer Awards is a great success for the band. So, how do you how how do you feel how do you feel about this award? Uh, one in, for the band is good, is bad, or perhaps it's nothing important for you. Uh, well, uh, it depends on what, what you uh, understand uh, in terms of uh, being important or not. But of course, it's a very, uh, very nice pleasure and a, a kind of an honorable thing to get. Uh, the, the Austrian Newcomer Award uh, was uh, the first award uh, that we got. Then later on, I think it was in 2010, we also received the biggest Austrian award, the Amadeus Austrian Music Award. Um, of course, this is, uh, let's say, on the one hand, it's uh, just um, a, a moment in in the life uh, in the lifespan over the time period uh, of a um, of a band that exists for over twenty years. You know, it's short moments during this long time. But still, it's very nice to have and uh, to being recognized. Uh, and it's definitely something to celebrate. Nice memories, you know. <laughs> okay, one, one, when, I read, when I read your uh, history, especially your biography, is that you, you participated in 2011 in Woodstock Britstanik in, in Poland. When you reach yes. uh, more than 300,000 people, uh, you are we you uh, even you are the first band from Austria that released uh, to play for uh, for more than more more three thousand with three hundred thousand people. So how do you feel about this aspect? Because it's very different your point of view than the, the fan has. Yeah, it definitely was the the biggest show we ever played on stage. It was just amazing, you know, to to have a huge crowd like that and uh, to make them jump and march around. Uh, to your own music, it was definitely for everybody of us uh, an experience we will never forget. Mm. Okay, now talking about from this new album, as you can see now, we are we are living in a world that prefers just singles and this kind of stuff for the playlist, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, this that this new generation prefers to hear the music now. One well, returning on time, etc. So for that aspect, which song or which songs for you? Are the best way to understand whole album or to recommend for the new for the new listeners for the new generation? Tricky question. Uh, I think uh, for me, my my most favorite are, for example, the end, the second single that we put out now, and uh, "Rock to Outer Space." I think they uh, 
they pretty much uh, summarize what we were uh, trying to, uh, or actually what we what we achieved to uh, uh, to bring uh, to the attention of the public. Uh, and uh, I think uh, if you listen to those songs, uh, the, the album is very well summed up. Although there are still a few tracks that, that kind of break out, you know, they still have uh, a little bit more of that old, well-known contrast style, which are maybe not so serious, a little bit more funny. And uh, I think there are... Uh, the, the whole album in general is uh, very colorful, you know. So it's hard to it's hard to pick one or two songs that represent all of them, because everybody who knows contrast and uh, the way we uh, write music, uh, we are always trying to mix and match and uh, be colorful and have uh, we 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 are not stuck to to one simple songwriting layout and then write all of our songs according to that we try to uh to make it more colorful you know? okay well as uh, talking about the promotion from this new album what kind of plans uh, do you have for this new album perhaps about more tours europe us japan or who knows uh, latin america and a whole tour who knows here who knows yeah hope Hopefully soon, we, we actually get a lot, a lot, a lot of requests from uh, South and Latin America, uh, from Mexico over Argentina, Chile, Brazil. Uh, obviously, obviously the, the metal fans, they are really uh, dig our music, which uh, is, is really, it's just awesome, you know. Uh, for now, of course, we're still sitting in the middle of Europe here, uh, and uh, we... I think for for uh, for next year we need to mainly focus uh, on Europe still, but uh, I hope uh, that we will cross the pond uh, rather soon, mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Mm, okay, okay. Well, as I mentioned in the first question, talking about other kind of aspects, not not just the band, the history of this new album. Uh, after all these years of experience as a professional musician, you had to learn how to live. From, from your art, and I think uh, it's getting difficult in some ways since bands don't sell many records in the, like, as an 80s or 90s, for example. And now to go on tour is getting getting more expensive because I spoke with Devin Giles and with Ray Eller from Faith Warning, and they told me that now is to to get a tour now in Europe especially, it's very, and US, it's very, very expensive for all bands. But on the other side, technology has brought some advantage. Of course, nothing is perfect. But you can take your music all over the world through digital platforms and social networks, allow you to be in contact with your fans more closely. So also, there is an alternative like crowdfunded that many bands use it for to, to release new albums, to release videos, etc., etc. So how so how difficult is it from you, from your perspective, to be a musician nowadays? Well, I think. Uh... If you're in, in the music business and especially in the rock music business for over 20 years, you, you must be nuts in, in, in some way, you know. Uh, I think it always was difficult. And uh, of course, uh, what history brought or how it developed, especially in the uh, music industry, uh, is a two, two sided sword, uh, as you said. Uh, on the one hand, uh, of course, uh, record sales are slim to none for most, or let's say for 99% of uh, all musicians. On the other hand, tech technology uh, has provided us with the opportunity to uh, really get out there uh, on a global basis. And I think if we would, uh, if we would have uh, released our stuff, let's say in the 80s before internet, um, I think it could have been even harder to reach, for example, South and Latin America, as we uh, talked about uh, just a minute ago, uh, which is now definitely easier. You know, people uh, can call our stuff up from all over the world around the clock all the time. And for the most part, they don't need, uh, need to pay for it even. Um, so this definitely is an advantage. And uh, I think uh, it, has, it has made it easier for us to get a broader reach Although, of course, uh, incomes are much, much lower in comparison to the past. 
So incomes are coming mainly, if not at all, uh, from uh, from the life business. Okay. Now that I mentioned the technology, we have artificial intelligence available to more and more people. And what we can do, it seems to not have boundaries from composing songs, record a song, and even using some else voice. For example, if someone wants, they can make you sing, sing a stairway to heaven well, without asking you, you to sing. So how do you see this you from your perspective as a musician? Will it have a big impact in the music industry? Do, and, and also, do you see you using yourself this new technology? Uh, for now, we did not use it at all. Uh, we, this album is completely handcrafted, as we also did it in the past with uh, all our albums. Uh, all the ideas are coming from us. Uh, every single piece of work that went into that uh, recording is handmade and coming out of our brains. Um, but I think uh, AI will definitely have an impact also on the music industry. AI will have an impact on everything. Uh, every other business, every other aspect of life will be influenced at least in some way by artificial intelligence. And the, the music industry definitely is not, uh, not excluded from that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's your opinion about uh, Julie about this aspect? Because you are the singer of the band. And obviously, if someone used your voice to record a new album, for example, in Indonesia or Thailand, or who knows where, are you agree with this? Or perhaps you will ask about, about your permission to use your voice into the, this aspect of the digital, well, in artificial intelligence? You know, I never thought about it. Uh, and uh, I, guess, I guess I would ask... Uh, them for getting permission from me because uh, it's my voice it's my uh let's say signature so well known and uh it's uh unique and like every voice actually so yeah i think i would mm -hmm. <laughs> i would ask okay oh well this aspect of well, your music your music in general is more like a, a, a lot of mixtures of everything because you have Rap, tank, folk, in, in industrial, electronic, progressive. It's normal because now this is the new wave to hear music for all kind of bands. If we if we if we compare with the eighties or nineties, when the music is just by uh, versus, chorus, versus, chorus, and single and sing the song. That's normal because that's the way to to hit the song for the for the audience in in general. But in in this aspect. Why the band always try to say once uh, just to put uh, different rhymes, different schemes to create new music? And perhaps do you afraid to do in some way that the band is is not have the same the same it's not have the same catchy ways or have groovy ways to understand the music? I did not really get the question. Uh... No, why? Was, uh, the, oh, oh, now I I refresh the question. So now the band is mix a lot of things into your music. So how do you now, what's your opinion about now the people of the 80s and 90s, I don't, uh, they, don't, they, they, they don't agree about the, about the use a lot of styles, just use just the simple way to hear music as the 80s of 90s. Versus, chorus, versus, chorus, and sing the song. But with your songs, it's, in, it's not possible to sing the song. You need to understand whole music to, to, to see what happened with the music. Well, let's say uh, with contrast, our our name uh, is uh, is the program. Uh, our name dictates the bro program uh, in our music. Uh, contrast is always contrasty, colorful, uh, a blend of a lot of different uh, different kinds of music, different styles, different influences. Uh, that's how we are. That's how we approach music. But of course, we we still are layouting uh, in a kind of a common way, you know, with verses, with choruses. Uh, the more you uh, uh, the more you try to uh, understand or get close uh, to understanding what we are writing, uh, the more you the the more often you listen to our music, the better you will understand it. And then, of course, you can sing along, and so does the audience every time we we are on stage. Mm. Okay, 
How about now? As I as I mentioned, we're in a world that one well, that prefer to do the uh, things very personalized. So it's very personalized, and there are more strange, technical, progressive, experimental, avant-garde. I don't know how many how many labels put now the reviewers, but now there's 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 new way to hear music. Things that many uh, and this kind of stuff. A lot of things do this kind of fast mix a lot of a lot of music with their music. So what do you think will happen to the next generations when listening when listen to the music that is very personal? Would would we be taking about a close word for a new band? Because there is no because there there will no longer be a song in the radio because they prefer to listen more personal artists now because for the digital platforms. In general I think uh, music got a lot more simple, you know, maybe almost too simple. And even we try to to be in the songwriting process as simple as possible to not overwhelm uh, people with with things that probably only musicians would care about, you know. Uh, I think the audience uh, likes and prefers to have to have music to listen to, which is just uh, easily understandable. And uh, in metal, of course, that's kind of a little bit difficult, let's say, because metal lives from being, uh, yeah, I, I would not say overcomplicated, but uh, still, uh, there is a lot, a lot more to it than, than uh, in comparison to some pop tunes or uh, some hip hop that's basically beat and, and vocals, you know. Um, I think uh, I think we did a great job on on uh, let's say simplifying to to that uh, to that amount that people are uh, understanding our music easily while still keeping our mission of uh, providing colorful and rich uh, context rich uh, music. Great, great. So, and one, we are very close to this interview. And for this aspect, talking about from the one, well, talking about from the creation of the music in general. So, usually, when I spoke with when a musician, the musician told me that they they feel by the way of this of the feelings created by the moment of the what well, of the sun at the moment, etc. Of the environment inside or outside. That's normally for a lot of for a lot of musicians, but. As, as you can see now, the musician has the other side of the composing area, the, the area, because when you compose music, always you think in, in the mathematical aspect, when you create two riffs, three riffs, uh, that note enter in that aspect, in etc. So you are thinking the music in some way. And at the same time, you are not thinking the music. So that's normally for both. So for you, in which parts, uh, in which part the music is connected with the mathematical aspect, with the feeling aspect? Do you think, do you think the music exists with both, or perhaps for you, as as many artists told me that the, perhaps you just feel it by the way of your feelings and create the music as as you think? It's definitely both. Uh, you cannot write music without feelings uh, because music has to carry emotions. Uh, it has to. Uh, to mirror your your feelings and emotions, uh, there is no doubt it will from the very first moment. You have an idea first, and you try to to lay out uh, this kind of idea. You try to uh, progress into it, you know, uh, work into it uh, step by step. Uh, so there is no way to do it without feelings at all. Uh, on the other hand, it's also impossible to do music with, without mathematics because uh, music just is built on, uh, let's say, strict rules, on mathematical rules. So it has to be a mixture of, uh, mixture of both. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, guys, the sad times are right with this interview. I hope you enjoyed this one like me. I uh, love this new album. It's very, very weird in some ways. But no, it's, it's, it's a good one. Congratulations on it. And Thank perhaps you. we want to add something to your Latin American fans and Metalino followers. Yeah, definitely. We're trying really hard to get over to uh, Latin America as soon as possible. As we said, we're trying to cross the pond uh, as soon as possible. And then, of course, we will. We would love to have you there on our shows and uh, see you on stage. Great. Perhaps we want to add something, Julia, for your fans here in Latin America. Yeah, definitely, uh, guys. Of course. Uh... Stay, uh, stay crazy, amazing, stay rock and roll. 
say contrast, listen to contrast, uh, live in color, yeah, as I do. Enjoy your life and, uh, of course, wait for us. We definitely one day will come to rock you all there with our music.